Hi, Braves family. Welcome, Welcome to, to church, church from, from the Timmons family. Hi, Braves. We miss you. Have a great day. This is Shirley, who sits there in that one chair at church. Our God is with us, and thank you for being the church you are. Bye bye. Everyone, it's so nice to see you today. It's interesting because I really can't see anybody. <laughs> but anyway, it's great to say hello. And we don't know when this is going to be played. So good morning, good afternoon from us. Hey, praise Assembly. Joy Pearson here, Pastor Joe's daughter, and Robert Johnson, his other daughter, uh, saying happy Sunday. Welcome, Praise. We are so excited to gather with you. Would you please join us in worship? Nothing can separate. Welcome to Praise. We are so pleased to have you join us today for our service. We just had some wonderful worship. I hope that 
helped you um, start to think about the Lord, uh, whether this is your first time to join us or whether you've been with us every week, we're just equally glad that you're here. We have a good program for you today. We're gonna to be talking about the parables a little bit more and about the kingdom of God is like. So that will be really good. Um, Jessica and Ruff Ruff are ready to go as soon as we open in prayer. Father, we are so thankful that we have each person here today. Lord, we just pray that you'll be present in our homes, on our telephones, Lord, wherever we happen to be watching. Lord, touch our hearts. We give you all the honor and praise in your name, amen. Hey everyone, I'm Jessica. And I am Ruff Ruff, oh, can you take that roll? And I am Ruff Ruff the Singing Dog, and I have a song for you. Are you ready, kids? Oh, uh, you can go ahead and put that on. And, uh, <clears throat> Do you think you could play the part of the kids? Uh, what are you talking okay. about? I gotta do like this SpongeBob song. I change the words real quick. Just, just go with it. <laughs> rough, rough. What about our Bible story? It goes perfect with our Bible story. Please, oh please, oh please, oh please. <sighs> okay. Woohoo! Okay. <laughs> are you ready, kids? Aye, aye, Captain. I can't hear you. Aye, aye, Captain. Oh, who lives in a house that is made out of wood? Uh, You're supposed to say, rough, rough, the dog. What does this have to do with our Bible story? I'm glad you asked. Today we're learning about the parable of the fishing net. So I thought I would sing about being a captain of a ship and get the kids excited for our story. I just changed the words a little bit because the original words are about a sponge named Bob who lives in a pineapple under the sea. Um, when do we get to the part of the song about you being a captain? I can't be a captain, silly Jessica. I'm a dog. You would be the captain, and I start singing about you in the seventh verse right after the guitar solo. Ruff, Ruff, we don't have time to sing a song that long. We need to teach about our Bible lesson. Oh, well, probably for the best. My paws are still a little sore from all that guitar practicing. Oh, Ruff, Ruff, you never stop surprising me. Well, kids, Jesus said that the kingdom of heaven was like a fishing net that was let down into the lake and caught all kinds of fish. And when the net was full of all kinds of fish, the fishermen pulled it to shore. They kept all the good fish and threw the bad fish Why away. Why would Jesus share such a fishy parable? <laughs> Jesus was sharing this parable with fishermen who understood exactly what he was talking about. Oh, that makes sense. If Jesus was sharing a parable to me, I wonder what the parable would be about. Dog bones. Where, where's the dog bones? Do you have focus, the dog bones? Rob, please, Rob, please, Rob, please. Focus. Oh, hey, okay. Hey kids, how about you draw us a picture of a big net catching lots of fish? We would love to see that, and don't forget to ask your parents to post it online. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. That way you could be entered into winning a Nintendo Switch. That's right, boys and girls. Now here's our message. Thank you, Ruff Ruff and Jessica. We have awesome children's pastors that are doing a tremendous job uh, communicating uh, great stories, and I look forward to it every week. It is so fun. And I know you will do too, even though you're not a kid. So, And you kids, make sure you do your artwork and get it in, because that's really a cool thing. Hey, I, I have always had a trouble with my, my directions. My wife says I'm directionally challenged, that I have a difficulty knowing which way to go sometimes. Like, if I come out of an elevator, if I feel to go right, she says, go left, because that, that way I will probably be right more often, because I get lost, and here's what happened. I was raised in Montana, and every square mile was 640 acres, and there was a county road that ran one mile this way, one mile that way, and everything was north, south, east, west, one mile. Well, I moved to Oregon, and not only can't, you can't see the, the sun, you also don't know which way north is, and the roads curve and go around creeks and rivers, and, and there's trees, and so it's, for me to know which way to go, I was raised north, south, east, west, one mile, two miles, all the grid, so, so I am like directionally challenged. Well, let me just tell you a little story about that, because when I was a kid, my dad and mom and my older brother and my sister went to Los Angeles, California, 
for the first time for me to be out of the state of Montana other than going to Canada, we went <laughs> to LA and I'm telling you the, the, the shock was amazing because the cars were freeways. Uh, we were just blown away by the amount of people. Well, it was nighttime when we were driving and my mom uh, exclaimed to my dad, hey, that car up there has a Montana license plate. And so my, <laughs> my dad, lonely for anybody from Montana, drove that car behind, uh, drove behind that car and was flashing his lights uh, and trying to get him to turn. And finally the car exited and pulled into a parking lot and dad pulled alongside of him, rolled down the window and says, hey, I see you're from Montana. We're from Billings, because you could tell by the numbers what town they're from. There's not that many people in Montana. And he says, yeah, I see you're from Conrad. And so they got out of the car and had this reunion. They hugged each other. It was crazy because we were lonely and displaced Montana people. Uh, we had lost our bearings and we were just in a different culture. And we saw someone else who helped us bring us back to who we were. This is how the kingdom of God is. Uh, Jesus is explaining the kingdom of God. And we're talking about this crazy life because we're in this Corona crazy life right now where we have, I can't remember what day it is. That's what, what, what the most often question right now is, what day is it? Because we're out of our sink, we're out of our rhythm and we just don't, we just don't know what our bearings, we're kind of lost our bearings. Well, Jesus was explaining the kingdom of God. He said, the kingdom of God is like, and he goes on to explain it in this parable we're going to talk about in Matthew chapter 13. We're going to read in verse 47, but like our <laughs> friends from Montana we found in L.A., we were so happy to find somebody that, that got us and understood us. Well, I'm praying for you and I to understand the kingdom of God like that, that we get it. Now, I could explain what Montana is like to you. But unless you've been there, you, you really, it's hard for you to get it. And I think that's kind of how the kingdom of God is. If you want to experience the kingdom of God, you just start following Jesus and you start to understand. Well, the people gathered around Jesus were waiting for him to explain. I'm going to read this. Matthew chapter 13, uh, verse 47 through 52. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a dragnet, which is like a large fishing net. It takes a lot of people to pull it in that was cast into the sea and gathered some from every kind, which when it was full, they drew to shore and they sat down and gathered the good into vessels, but threw the bad away. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come forth and separate the wicked from the just and cast them into the furnace of fire. Yeah, it's, this gets a little rough. And there, there will be waiting, uh, wailing and gnashing of teeth. Nobody wants to hear that. Jesus said to them, have you understood all these things? And he said to him, I'm not sure they were being honest, but they said, yes, yes, Lord, we get it. And then he said to him, for every scribe instructed concerning the kingdom of heaven is like a house owner, a homeowner who brings out his treasure, uh, things new and things old. Now, I want to explain this and take apart this scripture a little bit. And I want us to get the kingdom of God. When Jesus said the kingdom of God is like, we need to lean in and take, uh, pay attention to his teaching on this because I want to know what the kingdom of God is like because I know what other kingdoms are like. I know what political kingdoms are like. I know what denominational kingdoms are like. I know what uh, nationalism and different things that are set up and with full of boundaries. I, I want to just try to learn what the kingdom of heaven is like. Now we have five guiding values in our church. One of them is to be spiritually awake. And if I was going to cite any value uh, of our guiding values that reflected this teaching, it's this one, to be spiritually awake, to get and understand the kingdom of God. It is of great advantage to you if you get this and understand it. Okay, first of all, the kingdom of light, uh, uh, kingdom of heaven is like a gathering. He compared it to a net that was a drag net, a big one that you drag through the ocean and, and, the, and all the, animals, the fish and all the, all the creatures of the seas, fish, rubber boots, whatever else is out there, it, it's all pulled in together. And then there's a sorting out later. The kingdom of God is like a drawing to you. It's, it's have you ever felt drawn to the Lord? I, I know you have, if you've been alive very long, you feel this, this drawing to God. I, I talked to a farmer one time who, who was talking to me uh, and he said, I, 
I was out working in my field and I felt this amazing presence of God and I don't know what to do about it. He said, I just kind of stopped and bowed my head and prayed and I just looked around at all the beauty and I said, that's the spirit of God drawing you. See, God wants to do that and he wants to, to pull us in. And sometimes we think God is like chasing us down or hunting us or trying to beat us over ahead with a board and no, it's a drawing to him. Uh, his heart is for you to be with him. And that's why Jesus explained the kingdom of God. He said, it's like a net. It's like a dragnet. It's like, I want all to come to me. That reminds me of John 3, 16. And we talked about it a few weeks back. So for God so loved the world that he gave his son, the whole world. And I think we have to remember that. If we're going to get the kingdom of God, we're going to have to understand that he's after the whole world. Um, and not just the ones we like, not just the ones that we think in our category, but he wants all to come to him. So whenever you run into somebody, you should be aware that the Holy Spirit is up to something in their life and that there's a drawing going on. Whether it's the garbage man or the person in the store or a person you run into, just be in step with the Spirit and be spiritually awake and get the fact that there's, there's, a, there's a kingdom of God that is drawing people to the Lord. Okay, so secondly, the kingdom of God is after all kinds. Like I said, he doesn't just want the kinds we think, he wants all kinds. Now, I was raised in a denomination, the same one we're in now, uh, and I was just as a kid fascinated by the fact that we were the ones that knew everything and everybody else kind of was out of step with what was true. <laughs> I don't know if anybody, anybody told me that, it was just, something I picked up along the way. But my mom and dad took me to uh, Gideon meetings. Dad was a member of the Gideons who put free Bibles in schools and hospitals and motels and, and for the servicemen and women. It, it was a, it's a great ministry. We went to the Gideon meeting and I remember seeing people that were, uh, they were Lutherans, Presbyterians and Baptists, there were Catholics, there were all kinds of people and I remember just looking around the room and then at the end of the meeting, they sang this song, uh, Blessed Be the Tie That Binds. And they all held hands and raised them together and sang the last chorus. It was part of their traditional way of closing their meetings. I think that deeply impacted my heart, my, kid, my, my little spirit and my little child heart. I became aware that God loves all people and that I don't have some kind of a lock on God. We get really in dangerous ground when we think we have all the truth and others don't. Uh, we need to see the kingdom of God and, and, and get it because the, the Holy Spirit would like us to uh, be aware of the church as a whole. And so many times denominationalism is, is just the, the fact that we want to put boundaries around our doctrines and, and, and not let anybody else in. It's, it's actually the science of seeing how we're different and to, and to focus on our differences instead of what unites us. And, and actually, revival breaks out when the unity of the Spirit starts sweeping through the land and people from all places and all backgrounds start to hunger after God. And, and all kinds are brought in to the kingdom of God. And that's what the kingdom of God is like, Jesus said, it's all kinds. And, and, and I think we have to really be careful of how we put boundaries around our country. We put boundaries around our denominations or around our state. And this is our state and that's your state. And I think God wants us to just see the world as he does, as the world. And so we're understanding that the kingdom of heaven is is a gathering and it's for all kinds. And third, it's the new as well as the old. You know, the scripture at the end said, uh, the kingdom of God is like a, a homeowner who, who goes out of his treasure and finds things that are new and things that are old. Uh, I was in Turkey about four years ago on a trip uh, with young leaders and it was quite profoundly uh, uh, impacting to me. I was in, a, uh, in the ruins of a church uh, this church was uh, like 200 AD, just one of the early churches. And it was in the ruins. They could barely see the walls and where it was. And I remember standing there in awe of this church that had been established. And it was, it was pre-labels of anything, 
pre-Catholic, pre-Protestant. It was just the followers of Jesus that gathered in this building and they, they had this uh, little room and the place where they worship. And I remember feeling like, wow, this church is no longer in existence. And then the, it was like, as soon as that came out of my heart, the Spirit of God corrected me. No, oh, this church is living now. See, these people loved the Lord and worshiped God. The building went away. <laughs> I don't know if they had a, a virus, but the building went away and the church plowed ahead and, and spread all over the known world and became impacting to people. You and I are results of the commitments of that early church that just was just so new to God. I, I remember seeing the bones of a, of a young girl who was martyred because she basically had a home group in her house and, and, and it was just a holy place. And I'm just telling you, understanding the kingdom of God is getting the fact that the, the church is not locked in a, in a building, but it's, it's in our hearts. And when we love and we, there are generations beyond us that are going to be impacted by your faith and my faith. And they might be walking around some old ruins of a whole building. I don't know what our buildings would be. Maybe this would be a good grain ray or something. But the Spirit of God is going to be alive and moving through the world, through humans and through people. So it's the old and it's the new. God is doing a new work. We love planting churches. Our, we've planted different churches. Our, our Spoken Hostel is a new church plant, the new church plant in Eugene. Um, McMinnville's in a restart of a church. And Monmouth was a church plant in 2001. And we're going to have a new church plant coming up, hopefully fall or spring. There is a, a necessary newness to the spreading of the gospel that we keep taking steps in planting new churches. Now, it's really important to understand that this isn't going to be this is a church, the building and the structure and the organization isn't going to last forever, but the kingdom of God does. See, so many times we get shallow in our, in our understanding and we, we think we have a, a grasp on things. And Jesus was telling the, the people following him there, he said, the kingdom of heaven is like this big net that's pulled in. It's a drawing to me. I am the king, <laughs> King Jesus, and we get to be subjects in his, in his kingdom. So Jesus, when he taught the disciples how to pray, he said, pray like this. And then he talked about the Lord's Prayer and hallowed be thy name on earth as it is in heaven, thy kingdom come. So it's both and. It's in heaven and it's on earth. It's in our heart and it's out here. It's in the old days and it's in the new days. The kingdom of heaven is continuing way beyond what we can see and understand. So you might be like, a, lost your bearings a little bit. I, you know, I go back to my story when we started where we were in Los Angeles, first time basically out of Montana in that kind of a, a culture. We were lost. Yeah. We were, didn't know how, what lane to travel in, what exit to, we were just in, a, we lost our bearings. When you lose your bearings, and maybe you've lost your job and you've lost your way of life, or maybe you're, you're in this place where you just don't know what's up and you got a lot of fear and you got a lot of anxiety, and maybe you're some real losses in your life where you've lost your bearings. Can I just tell you, the kingdom of God is still there for you and Jesus wants you to look to him and get your bearings and get understanding the kingdom of God because if you can understand the kingdom of God in these tumultuous times, it'll carry you through and you'll know, oh, wait a minute, this is about the kingdom. This is about the kingdom of God. Okay, that'll change your fear. It'll change your strategy on how you live and it'll, it helps me with my stress load because I realize Wait a minute, this is about the Lord. I just get to be his subject in his kingdom. So I want in this crazy life to get my bearings <clears throat> where we would run into somebody maybe who understands the kingdom of God. It would be like two people from Montana saying, oh, you get it too. You understand the whole, the whole thing about the Lord. What's he up to? Oh, he's scattering the church and everybody's in homes and it's awesome because they're reaching their neighbors and there's new things going on. 
the kingdom of God is advancing. And you see somebody else and you talk to them and they understand it and get it from some other church or walk of life and there's a connection made. It's like, it's like finding somebody from Montana in LA and just like, hey, you know, because if you have been there, you get it. If you've walked with the kingdom of God and you've followed the King Jesus, you get it and understand it. So maybe you're not understanding it. Maybe you're not aware. Uh, maybe you feel a drawing to God. I just want to challenge you to today to just let him pull you in and let him establish the truth of his kingdom in your life. It'll change your family. It'll change your work. It'll change everything. See, it's not about what you know. It's about who you know. And King Jesus is the one you need to know. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, that we're part of a kingdom of heaven. And we thank you for your, your great parable that taught us it's like a dragnet. It's like a drawing in. And we want to be drawn into you today. So I pray for everybody listening today that we would be drawn into you. And as we listen to some music and, and worship, Lord, would you talk to our hearts and draw us into you? Because we need to follow you in these crazy times. And we thank you for it, that you would love us that way. Amen.
Thank you, Praise Family, uh, for joining us today. You know, it's so exciting, even while we're sitting in the comfort of our own homes, to be able to praise and, and to worship God together and to listen to sound teaching. You know, talking about the kingdom is, is a challenge to all of us. You know, but isn't it really amazing to think that whether you're pursuing Jesus, whether you're running from Jesus, that he has cast a net around all of us and he is gently drawing us near to him. So maybe you're sitting at home today and you're thinking, man, I, I just didn't know that God had such a love and such a grace. And I, I just want you to know that, that he wants that relationship with you. And so I said, if you are running from him or you're not sure where you're at with him in relationship, just know that he's always trying to draw you closer in. So I wanna just take a moment uh, as this gathering is coming to a close, to pray with you and uh, just know that wherever you're at, God is loving you and he's drawing you. And let's, let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this time that we've had to share. Lord, from the comfort of our living rooms or the comfort of our own beds or our own sofas. But God, thank you for the time we've had to lift up your name and, and to hear from your word. And Lord, I just pray that as maybe our, our hearts and minds have been open to this reality, God, that you're, that you're ever gently drawn us close to you. God, I just pray that maybe we take a, a moment and just respond to that. So thank you for loving us. God, thank you for loving us where we are. We just give you praise today in Jesus' name. Amen. I hope you have an incredible week and we look forward to seeing you soon.